Hello and welcome. You're watching the GB Times Third Angle Insight. I'm Jenny Hammond. It's a familiar story, old neighbourhoods in China being demolished in the name of modernisation. Often, the international media have written sensational headlines highlighting violent and sometimes fatal confrontations between residents and police or developers. But how common are these forced relocations? Are they always against residents' wishes? And if so, should people be able to stand in the way of development? Despite its robust economy and massive foreign exchange reserves, the fact remains that China is a developing country. The past couple of decades have seen rapid modernization and urbanization, and to make way for this progress, many old neighborhoods have been leveled or slated to be demolished, and the residents relocated, and it's not just in the cities. In the rural areas, both legal and illegal land grabs have become prevalent and have sparked numerous protests and public discontent. Extreme cases have included a farmer in Zhuzhou, Hunan province last year who set himself on fire in a desperate attempt to save his home from demolition by the local government. Also, in May this year, a resident in Heilongjiang province in northeast China was brutally killed when he tried to stop his home from being destroyed. But as disturbing as these events are, do they reflect accurately the overall situation in China? An article in The Guardian said the land requisition system deprives three or four million farmers of their land every year and around 40 to 50 million people are now dispossessed. China's government is aware of the problem, as the state-run China Daily points out. China has been striving to crack down on land grabs to ensure sufficient arable land to feed its people and protect farmers. However, local governments rely heavily on land sales for revenue and have been known to give preferential treatment to property developers. Amidst the debate about forced relocations and the shocking stories that surface, the good intentions can be overlooked. For the most part, residents support relocations as they usually move from rundown premises to clean modern homes. The majority of China's old architecture is made from brick and wood and has a lifespan of only about 50 to 60 years. And so most structures have now exceeded their projected service life. To compound matters, the lack of finance for renovation has rendered many of them dangerous and dilapidated. Consequently, in recent years, many local governments have decided to relocate residents in order to improve their living conditions. This clip from Feral Cat Films shows some residents' feelings from downtown Shanghai whose homes are being demolished to make way for a new development. Despite moving from often dangerous and dilapidated accommodation, some residents are reticent as they're moving away from their community to apartments usually on the outskirts of town. So travelling to work can become a problem and compensation does not always match market value. This has raised fierce debate among netizens. One posted on The Guardian... I live in China and can tell you that it has perfectly good property laws. It's just that the corruption is rife and that Chinese people are anything but cowed. From Tianya. One day, a notification was posted on the wall of my house telling us to move out, as it was to be torn down. We hung up slogans to appeal for support, but a group of people barged in and destroyed our slogans. How hopeless we are. Are there any human rights here? Another on Sina Weibo posted, If forced relocation complies with current Chinese laws, I think it's legal, just like the birth control policy. The most important factor is that compensation must be reasonable. However, if someone obstructs urban construction without special reasons, it's reasonable to force relocation. 
In 2011, China issued rules to put an end to violent force demolitions, stipulating that no violence or coercion could be employed, or measures such as illegally cutting water and power supplies could be used to force homeowners to leave. However, this has not stopped incidents from happening, and it's likely that they will continue, especially in the less developed regions. However, overall, it's positive that the government has recognised the problem and is putting regulations in place to give property and landowners more rights. This shows that China is starting to respect individuals' rights rather than maintaining for the greater good mindset. Well, that's it for today's programme, so please send your comments to feedback at gbtimes.com and also check out our website at www.gbtimes.com for more third-angle insights. 